They all sort of look the same on the top. Uh, so turkey tail like is what they're considered. So see how they have uh, the margins and they, they have the color changes. Right, but under is where you can identify them. So have three aspects here. So right off the bat you see these two are similar. But this has teeth. You see those very small teeth? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's texture. So that's called a toothed fungus. So there are three uh, possibilities in the mushroom world. There's the, the toothed fungus, there's the pores, like we were talking about with hen of the woods and chicken of the woods, and then there's um, the gilled mushroom. So those are the three kind of mushrooms you'll find. So the, the significant difference with this mushroom and this mushroom, I'm pretty sure this one's called hairy parchment or some kind of parchment, and this actually has purple when they're young, a lot of purple. When they dry out, they start to somewhat look like the other turkey tails, but yet, if you look on the underside, they have teeth. Done. That gives you ultimate understanding that this is not the true turkey tail. Okay? That does not mean that if there was clinical research on this mushroom, that it wouldn't be just as medicinal for you. It's just that it's not verified yet. So the first one, this one has teeth, not the turkey tail. This one is actually called the false turkey tail. Uh, Sterium ostrea is the Latin name. And you can see here it has a grayish underside or a tan. And so that tells you this is not the true turkey tail. Okay. Now I did find one bit of research online that they have actually extracted medicinal compounds from this mushroom in a laboratory, but it didn't talk about anyone ingesting them. So therefore I can't say that you should ingest them until I find out. I'm trying so desperately to find out if the false turkey tail also can be consumed. And so this one has turkey tail on the top and then is white on the bottom. Now this is a little off because it was in my container, but when you find these fresh they'll be pure white, no teeth, and this is the true turkey tail, Trimides versicolor. And this is a clinically, when I was talking about the breast tumor reduction, uh, the clinical studies, this is the mushroom that they were using, Trimides versicolor. So this has very anti-cancer effect, um, but that, the thing is, if it is if it works for cancer it works for the common cold you know what I mean um, so this is actually a great immunomodulator so a lot of times we think that we need to boost the immune system boost the immune system boost the immune system what happens when your immune system is so boosted does anyone know it overreacts so what is an overreaction of the immune system no, allergy growth. allergies cancer okay so cancer is a situation where your your normal cells are being corrupted your healthy cells okay psoriasis or eczema is an example of your immune system saying we need to get these cells off but they're healthy cells they're living healthy cells but it's taking them to be demented or unhealthy cells allergies is an overreaction of the immune system the immune system is seeing pollen as an enemy where most people can breathe pollen and it's no big deal they flush it through some people's immune systems say, this needs to get out of here. So it produces mucus to flush that out. Your body needs to produce that mucus to get the allergen out of the body. So this mushroom actually uh, stabilizes the immune system and helps the immune system to function well. So it will boost what's needed and it will lower what's needed. And it has that innate intelligence. And when you pharmacologically uh, synthesize one compound and call it the active compound, that may be one of the parts of this mushroom that boost, 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 but it doesn't have the regulating factors. So this has a chemical factory. These are like the original chemists of the world, and they've been tinkering and tweaking with the chemicals inside of them for a lot longer than we have had science as a methodology. So these mushrooms can be found in people's backyard. They are very good healers. Um, so even if you have a cold or a flu, very good to boil up. Again, you can throw it in a soup, or if you use a rice cooker, you can throw a handful of uh, the turkey tails into a rice cooker and then just cook them up. And then of course, take them out before you eat them. These are not edible, these are drinkable. So you can drink the compounds from them, but you can chew on it all day. I know people who do chew on it actually. How much water would you say for that piece of amount for of turkey this tail? Turkey tail, I would say not very much. I would say like getting to like a handful 
uh, would be significant, but one is better than none. Um, so, you know, I would say maybe five to ten of these in maybe a cup of water, boil for three to five minutes with a lid on it, and then you could use that liquid. And that would be very nourishing and very medicinal. They always grow on trees. These you actually want? are always, what you'll have here is a tree that's like this and it'll be covered in mushrooms. And so it's very interesting that what you'll find is the turkey tails are the more rare ones. So you'll, uh, you'll often find like it'll be 80% false turkey tails, like a certain percentage of these, and then like 10 to 5% of the actual turkey tails. So they're, they're a little more rare to find. And so often people, you know, will find these and think they have turkey tails. And I'm just yet to verify that someone drank them. And as soon as I do, I'll consider these also medicinal. So you can see right there, that's kind of how they grow. It's important to continue to have the tactile, real sensation, pick it, look at it, analyze it, smell it. A little furry. Yeah, a little furry. Nice, nice feeling. So they make great, like, uh, you know, just art. You can do a lot of artistic things with these. See how pretty? So those are the three kind of um, turkey tail mushrooms that you'll find. And so you want the Trimedes versicolor or the true turkey tail. I always keep a few with me. They'll have variation with the weather, how much water they get, and then no water, and then more water. So their growth patterns uh, will be different. So, and you'll also see there's color differences, see? These are both turkey tails. So there's color variations. Again, white underside, white underside. So the biggest identifiers are white underside mm -hmm. and white underside. Pretty and much. not being too not being toothed, a white, non-toothed underside that are growing on a tree and that are very small. They're not going to get too big. There are many other mushrooms that look like the turkey tails, um, but the underside is a significant factor. There's one that actually has gills. So, A turkey tail? Or a look like? A turkey tail looking mushroom that has gills. The one that is the true Trinides versicolor turkey tail has white underside and pores. So as long as you find that, you've got turkey tails and you can boil it up and put it in your soup or put it in however you can get it. If you powder it, just apply heat. If you eat it raw, it may not be absorbable to the system.